A few months ago, I bought a bootleg Game Boy Advance with a Heaven cartridge from AliExpress and I analyzed if it was worth the two dollars I had spent on it. And today we'll do the same with two bootleg Pokemon Game Boy cartridges. Not bootleg like this, but bootleg like this. They are basically repros. So let's see how they are made and if they are actually worth the money I spent on them. I bought these two cartridges together from AliExpress and you can find them from different sellers for around 4 US dollars each, which is pretty damn cheap for a working Game Boy game. They took around a month to arrive, which is a pretty okay time for a shipment from China to Europe, so let's see what they actually look like. Okay, so this is the only part of the video I haven't written, it's completely recorded live and it's probably going to be the worst part. But this is what I got in the mail and it's a Pokemon yellow cartridge, as you can see here, and a Pokemon green one. Now, the, the fun fact is that green never actually came out in the West, uh, it only came out in Japan, I have a copy here for reference. So this is a fan-made translation that was put into a physical cartridge. A few years ago they only wrote game here, which was a dead giveaway. This was fake, but now they are trying to, to mimic the proper Nintendo cartridge style. They even put this made in Japan thing here that the original cartridges have patent pending yeah pending for 30 years anyway a dead giveaway is simply the screw mount i have just noticed that it's completely different and i guess they are trying to use three wing to make those look legit but to also recycle the screws they are using to make gba bootlegs which i analyzed in another video and yeah, we can now open this up and I'm going to open up the green one first just to to put it side to side to the original Japanese green. I have a screwdriver here for the original one. It is called a game bit or something. Okay, so as you can see, the real cartridge is, is well built. Okay, and it has one, two, three, four chips. This is a lockout chip, I think. This is the battery. And you can see this was was made in the 90s. Even just from, from the weight of it, you can, you can notice that. And this is the bootleg cartridge. It's really, really lightweight. It feels like nothing is inside here. I am now going to disassemble this with a tri-wing screwdriver. Okay, so this should come out pretty easily. I, I don't think they put really a lot of thought into not making people open this up, but yeah. I just hope I, I don't I don't break it accidentally. Okay. And here's here's the bootleg cartridge. Now you, you can you can clearly see the difference. We have the ROM chip here. It seems to be really similar to the GBA one I have seen, even the form factor is the same. I think it's just another version of it, but I'm, I'm not sure. And you can clearly see the difference between the real one and the fake one. This hasn't got any battery though, which technically makes this more reliable since you are using a, a HEP ROM to save, so you're not going to lose your save when the battery dies. I am now going to open the yellow cartridge here, but I guess it's exactly the same, but with a different ROM flashed on it, so let's see. Yeah, yeah, same board with a different ROM. I guess they are like flashing a lot of this. Now, what I want to do is I want to put this to the test. I'm going to actually use this cartridge with a Game Boy player and if you're asking why are you not testing this with a normal Game Boy? Uh, there are two reasons for this. The first one is that my Game Boy SP is now in pieces <laughs> because I am upgrading the screen but the, the shell needs some trimming so it's, it's just laying in a box. And the second thing is I want to see if the 
Game Boy player actually can recognize this as a proper green cartridge since um, the Game Boy player has some special features like borders and stuff like that. So you want to see if this actually gets recognized by Hit as a proper Pokemon green cartridge. A few moments later. As you can see, both the green and yellow cartridges are perfectly recognized, including the Super Game Boy borders, which are correct for each game. The games are playable, and I haven't really noticed any major glitches. Pokemon Yellow is simply the American ROM of the game flashed into a new cartridge, while Pokemon Green is a bit odd. You see, we can notice this just by looking at the boot screen and the copyright info, which is the one from Red and Blue. So after some digging and analyzing of the ROM, I have understood what they did here. They didn't flash a translated version of green here, since that would be more complicated than needed. They flashed a Pokemon Blue hack created years ago by Skitendo called Pokemon Green in English, and an early version of it. You see, this hack takes the original blue ROM and changes all these sprites and minor details to actually transform it into a proper English version of green. I will leave you with the link of the IPS patch for this hack in the description of this video, just in case you want to try it. It's pretty well made and actually works really well, even when trading with normal copies of blue and green, as budget builds, which got a cartridge with the same ROM flashed on as tested. You can find this video in the description where he analyzed this ROM in detail. We'll now focus on another really interesting part of these wrappers, the hardware. You see? We know exactly what ROM was flashed here, but we don't know how this is working on a hardware level. And that's our specialty here, so here's a complete rundown of how this works. This is a high quality photo I took of the board. As you can see here, the form factor and the pinout is pretty interesting since it almost looks like a GBA cartridge and will actually fit in a GBA cartridge case. That's because the Chinese probably built some kind of universal custom cartridge that can be flashed with both GB and GBA games and will work fine with both of them. Now, the chips aren't covered, so we can actually check exactly what RW this is using. The Mitsubishi chip over here is a SRAM chip and it's used in place of the battery to save the game. It's really similar to the one we analyzed before in the GBA cart video, except it isn't that slow and it saves without any hiccups. The other chip here is a gl 32 a 10 by Spansion a 64 megabit flash memory that's used to all the game ROM. But here's the fun part. After searching for this, I discovered a website called flashcardb.com, which actually does list a lot of these clone cartridges and provides you with ways to flash your own ROMs to them. You will need a flasher to do so and they can cost a bit, but after getting one and one of these cartridges, you can actually reflash them to your own liking and make your own personal cartridges with whatever you like in them. This is probably the most interesting part of all of this, since it lets you make replos of whatever game you want. I haven't got a flasher, so I can't test this part out yet, but I will try getting one and I will keep you updated on how this will turn out. Anyway, was it worth to get these two cartridges? Well, considering I own Pokemon Yellow but only on the 3DS in the Virtual Console version, this was a good way for me to actually experience the original game, on original hardware without having to rescue for a overpriced used copy. As for Pokemon Green, this lets me play the game in English, which is awesome since I don't speak Japanese, but the best part is indeed that the flash chips here are reflashable and I can possibly flash any Game Boy game I want here when I get a flasher, and this means that I can actually play all sorts of region-specific versions or game hacks on proper hardware, which is really, really cool. So yeah, definitely get these if you can, they are good even just for having a board to reflash with the ROMs you want which is something I'm looking to do in the near future, so stay tuned. Anyway, thanks for watching, subscribe for more, hit me up with a like if you liked the video, I'm sorry if it took one month, but I had some hexams to pass, and yeah, that took me some time, but I'm going to be more active now, I promise. <laughs> anyway, catch you in the next video, or on Twitter, or whatever, goodbye!